Greetings and welcome to the fourth episode of Cities of Cyrodiil, where we look at a variety of city and town mods to help, you know, populate the Cyrodiil countryside. I'm your host, Sock Elf Guy, and uh, today we're actually only looking at one mod, the rather massive town compilation by Shazri, which includes five different towns around Cyrodiil, and I believe a couple of these might be, you know, slightly outside of Cyrodiil as well. And uh, anyway, we'll be taking a quick look at uh, each of these towns in this episode, and of course, you'll find a download link down in the video description below. And we're going to start things out with one of the small villages included in this package, Haven Bay, a town that's technically speaking actually in Valenwood rather than Cyrodiil, but you know, all well, minor detail. And uh, this is a rather nice looking small hamlet along the coast of Allenwood, just a short ways south of Anvil really, with a cluster of houses and shops around a small set of docks here. This is mostly a fisherman's town, most of the uh, locals here earn a living by the uh, sea, whether through trade or uh, ploughing the waves for the next big catch, and uh, despite the rather small size of this hamlet, the town is rather dense with houses and shops uh, jutting right up into one another. And, you know, the streets are really little more than, you know, small alleys in between buildings. There is a bit of an open space in the middle where the uh, town square and market is. And this is also where you'll find most of the shop vendors. But, you know, other than that, it's really quite cramped in here. And, uh, oddly enough, you will find the occasional vegetable patch hidden back here where the uh, locals grow their own fruits and veggies. And above the center of town, you'll find a handful of additional buildings, mostly residential houses and one manor overlooking the rest of the village here, with a small cliffside street running between them, which, you know, adds a nice sense of verticality to this otherwise, you know, fairly level and flat hamlet. Now, uh, taking a look at the map here, you can see Haven Bay, and it's uh, really not that far away from Cyrodiil, just a quick boat ride down the uh, coast from Anvil, really. It uh, does come with a map marker for easy fast travel, as you might expect. And also, as you might expect, the uh, town comes with a number of services, including a tavern right on the waterfront, which has a bit of a nautical theme to it, including some new sea shanty music, as well as a number of uh, dancing villages. And of course, you can find drinks and food for sale here, as well as a, a couple of beds available for rent if you're, you know, planning a short stay. And uh, the town also comes with one general market trader with a little shop here off the uh, village square. He buys and sells a lot of random goods with about 500 bartering gold, and this is also where you can, you know, buy the deed from the manor up on the hill. Though it's a bit on the expensive side, it costs about uh, 40,000 gold. And uh, moving on, you can see the manor you can purchase in town here, and it's a fairly, you know, large place, really. With a uh, first floor that includes a lounge right off the foyer, and a sort of, you know, kitchen and dining area off to the side here, which is a bit different from, you know, most homes in Cyrodiil, using a kitchen island for the main dining table. And uh, one of the really neat things here is that there's a balcony that overlooks onto the uh, ocean, which is a nice immersive and scenic touch. Uh, going upstairs to the uh, second floor, this is where you'll find all the uh, bedrooms here, including a bathroom, as well as a master bedroom, which is, you know, fairly plain, and a guest bedroom for any companions or NPC staff that you might have. There's uh, also access to another outdoor balcony up here that has some, you know, really nice views of the village as well. But uh, going on, the uh, next town that we're going to be looking at is uh, Woodland Village, and as you might expect, this is a village in the Great Forest between Skinningrad and the Imperial City, and it's really a fairly large town. I don't know what the exact building count is, but it's probably around 20 or so buildings. The uh, town is actually built right on the uh, Gold Road, which is the main thoroughfare between the Imperial City and the towns out west, essentially uh, cutting the town into two halves on either side of the Gold Road with the uh, town's chapel right in the middle. And uh, this is, you know, really a very scenic and kind of atmospheric town design. That, you know, kind of has a believable element to it. Like, you can imagine how this town would have, you know, just sprung up naturally just along the road here and uh, on the north side. You'll find a lot of residential dwellings with backyards that go back into the uh, Great Forest here, including a sort of a uh, haunted mansion a ways back in the woods. And I believe there's even a small quest or something of that nature involving this place. And uh, going over to the other side of the road here, most of this village is actually located on the southern side of the road, with, you know, these uh, little named side streets that span off of the Gold Road and connect a variety of shops and residences to the rest of the village here. And uh, this is sort of the uh, community commons area, 
where you'll find the village stables here for, you know, people to keep their horses, as well as an outdoor cafe and, you know, Walden streets that allow you to look out into the uh, forest beyond. And again, this village is just extremely scenic, and to truth be told, it's probably my favorite town out of all the ones included here. It's uh, just, you know, so cozy and atmospheric. The perfect place to, you know, stop by, relax, and maybe uh, purchase a house at. And uh, anyway, there's also a few gardens here and there. Not to mention lots of uh, flowering window boxes and a uh, well here for the townsfolk to draw water from. And all this makes this a really scenic town that you can just imagine, you know, taking a stroll around. And uh, you can see Woodland Village on the map here. And again, it's uh, right on the Gold Road between Skinningrad and the Imperial City, making for a nice place to stop in at on your, you know, trips out west. And of course, it does also include a map market. And like most of the towns we'll be looking at today, there's a wide variety of services available in Woodland Village, such as a uh, sizable tavern, where you can rent a bed, grab a drink, and, you know, talk to the uh, villagers. There's uh, also a small clothing shop where you can purchase a variety of garments to wear, and if you're the sort, you know, looking for a new shirt or a pair of trousers, this is a good place to stop in at. And, you know, probably the uh, big highlight here, though, is the town bakery, which is a rather cozy and heavily detailed mixed bakery and cafe with tons of new foods and tasty treats to try out, including sweet rolls, cakes, pies, and loaves of bread, and uh, you can find it all available for sale here. And, you know, this is a common gathering place for the uh, villagers who, you know, tend to take their meals here. And the entire second floor is dedicated to a common dining area, really. And uh, there is a small manor that you can purchase here, which includes a sizable, you know, first floor, with a large lounge that includes a roaring fireplace with couches and uh, comfy chairs for our guests to sit at and enjoy the warmth of the fire in. And uh, up on the second floor, you'll find a bit of, you know, display space, as well as a small study area with a desk. And you'll notice there's a lot of cabinets in this house, and these actually open up to provide a uh, chest of storage or display shelves. And uh, finally, up on the uh, third floor, you have the master bedroom, which is rather spacious and cozy looking, to be sure. Heading off to our next village, though, we're uh, coming up to Ravenview Village. And this is a rather scenic and sizable mountaintop village along the border of Cyrodiil and Hammerfell, with about uh, 18 or so buildings, I think. The town is fairly isolated from pretty much all other civilization, with only one road that goes up the mountain to the top here, but this is a very scenic village to visit, to be sure. The main part of town is this, you know, large village square, where you'll find a nice set of parks and gardens in front of the uh, village chapel, as uh, well as the local tavern and a couple of shops. Though uh, most of the residences here actually face outward with multiple streets looking down on the province of Cyrodiil far below. And to say the least, the uh, views up here are pretty fantastic. And I do like the uh, sort of, you know, layering effect of the streets here that uh, lend an air of, you know, verticality to the design of this village. And, you know, this is probably one of the more unique looking towns included in Shazri's town compilation. You uh, certainly don't see a whole lot of mountaintop town mods out there, though of course we did cover one in our pilot episode a while back. And either way, you'll be pleased to note that there is, of course, a viable player home here as well. And uh, you can see Ravenview Village on the map here, and like I said before, it's a bit isolated. The nearest city is Coral to the south, but it's, you know, a bit of a hike. Though, uh, thankfully, a map marker is included for fast travel. As you should expect by now, there's a number of services here in town, most notable being the tavern here. And uh, one of the nice things to note about some of these towns is that they do carry a bit of unique dialogue. For example, here in uh, Ravenview, most of the citizens have at least a few lines of unique dialogue and, you know, can tell you a bit about uh, themselves and, you know, the city at large. And uh, there's also a bit of a quest here. Apparently one of the citizens in town has gone missing, and I believe you can, you know, choose to help locate him if you're, you know, feeling up to it. And uh, anyway, there's also a general traitor with about a thousand bartering gold. And also a house deed you can purchase here in town for only 6,000 gold, which is, you know, pretty cheap, i got to say. And, you know, like pretty much everyone else in town, she has a ton of new dialogue, which is always a plus in my book. And uh, this house that you can purchase is a bit different from, you know, most, honestly. It's uh, really on the outskirts of town, and it's actually an exterior home that you can walk right into without, you know, loading a new interior cell. It's uh, not a big place, of course. It has a small kitchen, dining room, and at lounge, all in the uh, same room, basically, with a uh, small master bedroom in the back. But it uh, makes up for this small size with a lot of character, including a balcony that has some just really amazing views. 
And it also has light sources that you can turn on and off. And I believe you can even, you know, open and close the curtains as well, which is, you know, kind of a nice bonus there. And uh, moving on though, we're uh, next going to be taking a look at Lakewood Village. And uh, Lakewood Village is, as the name would imply, a village on a small lake here in South Central Cyrodiil. And, you know, the first thing I should really note here is that this town, you know, more than uh, any other in this package, is in a pretty conflict-heavy area. There's a lot of other mods in this exact same spot, including another town mod that uh, we just looked at in the last episode, I believe, the town of Alnwick, so just keep that in mind. I oh, don't think there's a compatibility patch for Alnwick, so it's pretty much, you know, one or the other. But uh, having said that, Lakewood is a beautiful and scenic village with a really, you know, lovely and unique design that makes it feel a bit like a renaissance town in some respects, including a sort of busy main street where you'll find most of the shops, the uh, tavern, and also, you know, the local innkeeper, as well as a bakery. And uh, this is probably one of the larger towns included in this compilation with over 20 buildings. And the design here has a little bit of, you know, verticality to it. You know, with uh, multiple levels of streets, buildings and plazas and, you know, a fair portion of town actually sits up here on a uh, upper plaza with some nice views of the lake. And you'll notice the town is fairly scenic with uh, lots of uh, lovely gardens and the like. What uh, kind of strikes me about this village is that it does feel a bit dark even with the uh, gardens and the beautiful scenery due to the colouring of the buildings here. And you know, that might actually be uh, deliberate. There's uh, something of a dark secret and quest involved with this town that we're actually going to be skipping over here so as to avoid spoilers and all that. And you can see Lakewood Village on the map here, and again, it's in a fairly popular location, so conflicts are very likely. And other than that, it's a fair ways east of Reville, and of course, it does contain a map marker. And you know, like always, we're going to take a look at a few of the services available in town, such as the uh, Tavern, which is a fairly large place, actually, with some rather rich and well-done furnishings. And again, almost all the NPCs here have some, you know, new dialogue. Uh, talking about the town, themselves, or their neighbours, or possibly even the strange goings on around town. And uh, there's actually two player homes for sale here in Lakewood, including a manor and a smaller townhouse. Now we're going to take a quick look at the uh, manor here, which is a sort of uh, Chayden Hall style bed with a kitchen on the uh, lower level, a study and display area up on the uh, second floor here, a master bedroom up on the top floor naturally, which again, like many of the homes we've looked at here, is you know quite spacious. And uh, there's also a basement, where you'll find a small magical lab with altars of enchanting and spellmaking, and also a training room for you to use. Finally, we're coming up to our last town for the showcase, the city of Pellsgate. And this is definitely more of an actual city compared to the other towns that we've looked at. It uh, actually has over 30 buildings, and you know, that kind of makes it a similar size to other major settlements around Cyrodiil, and uh, much larger than Skyrim's capital. Though, really, all these towns are larger than Skyrim's capital. I mean, I know, I know, I like to poke fun at Skyrim, but seriously, their city sizes are a joke. But uh, anyway, back to our showcase here, Pellsgate has something of a bad reputation, as it uh, turns out, home to the impoverished, criminal, and murderous. Unlike the uh, other towns we've looked at that have all been, you know, rather naturally scenic with flowers, gardens, and... A pleasant views, uh, Pell's Gate is simply run down with, you know, little scenery aside from the rubbish piles and graffiti that seemingly mark every nook and cranny. Most of the streets here are little more than alleys with buildings leading right into one another, making it easy to get lost in the back streets here. And having said that though, there is something of a central plaza here where you'll find most of the uh, main attractions here in town. There's a couple of taverns, shops, and the uh, city museum that you can find all here in the uh, town square. Along with the only gardens in town, really, the rest of Pell's Gate is mostly just broken down alleyways where you would sooner get mugged than find anything useful. And it should be mentioned that Pell's Gate has several residences for sale as well that uh, span the gambit from a lavish abode to a tiny hole in the wall apartment that's affordable but, you know, really doesn't offer anything else. And uh, anyway, you can see Pell's Gate on the map here. And it's really not that far away from the Imperial City, just across uh, Lake Rumea, really. It uh, does come with a map marker, as you should expect by now. And uh, moving on to look at some of the services here, there's a ton of shops here, such as a bookshop providing a number of, you know, different goods for you to purchase at your convenience. And uh, next up, we have one of the taverns in Pell's Gate. I think there might be a couple of different taverns and cafes here. Though uh, this one is a bit on the small side, but it's a nice enough place for this town anyway to, you know, rent a bed for the night. And obviously, there's also a general goods shop here, which is, of course, a good place to stop by 
and unload your loot in between adventures, assuming of course that you don't get mugged on your way in. And there's something rather interesting to note here, Pell's Gate has a few apartment buildings, which are of course a bit on the uh, run-down side, with a lot of trash and the like, but this is where a lot of the impoverished citizens make refuge, with a small little apartment off to the sides here, and you can even buy one of these apartments, with all the neighbourly problems that comes with, from showing walls and floors with a bunch of other strangers. Now, having said that, one of the nicer homes I can purchase is, well, you know, quite a bit more upper class, with a full kitchen and dining room down on the first floor, with a fairly sizable amount of space, I might add. A uh, second floor up the stairs here, where you'll find the main lounge, where you and your guests can, you know, sit back and enjoy a book or, you know, discuss the latest mugging in town, or what have you. And of course, you'll also find the master bedroom up on the top floor. And you'll notice the finishings in here are a bit on the, you know, sort of modern side. There's a fair number of interiors with modern finishings in this set of mods. So that's something to, you know, note if you prefer a more, you know, sort of rustic and lore friendly style. Now, underneath Pell's Gate, you'll find one of the largest museums and collections of art and artifacts in Cyrodiil. And this place is massive, practically the size of the entire town itself, though obviously it perhaps isn't entirely lore friendly. And, you know, there's also a bit of a disconnect here with the uh, sort of wealth that's apparent down here in the museum and the impoverished state of the town above. Anyway, there's a number of, you know, different sections and halls for curious displays for you to explore. Even a set of shops with some, you know, gift items that you can purchase. And of course, the main content here focuses around the mysterious disappearance of the uh, Septum Crown. A quest that you can solve, and you know, there's actually a number of quests in Pearl's Gate for you to do. But anyway, we're going to, you know, be skipping over all that, so as not to uh, spoil everything. And this is pretty much the end of our showcase here, so uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next month with another episode of Cities of Cyrodiil.